Hello everyone and welcome back to another news video here to discuss. We've got a couple of pieces of news to discuss here, including a signing, uh, some injury updates, plus we've got some off-season rumors, including the Flames being big players next year and free agency in the tree markets. Could the Sabres be looking for a veteran 1B next year to work with Yuki Pekalukunin at the NHL level? And could we see the Arizona Coyotes do some of sort of the similar thing we saw them do with Sean Dersey last year, this year, and go after another young player with some of their draft capital? We'll get to all of that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Indian Talk channel. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you for all your support. I know it's with all of you guys, so if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe button down below. And don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below because I'll discuss today's video. Now, we talked about this in our last video. We're a little bit backlogged with the signings, so we got into 10 of the signings last video uh, when we talked about dry saddles and things like that. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the other nine uh, signings we never got around to up to uh, yesterday's signings. So we'll get to all those here. First, the Minnesota Wild have given an ELC. Uh, most of these are ELCs. So the Minnesota Wild have given an ELC to 2023 second round pick Riley Height, who I was expecting to be an early second round pick, maybe a late first round pick. He wound up going very late second round. Uh, he's a forward. He's been playing over in the WHL. Assigned a three-year ELC with the AV of $950,000 that'll begin at the start of next year. That's a pretty good deal in my opinion for height. Now I expect he probably needs another year of development time, but eventually should be able to be a solid top nine forward for the Minnesota Wild. Last year in Prince George at 25 goals, 97 points in 68 games. It was a fantastic season, way over a point per game, but he's actually smashed out of the water this year. In two less games in 66 games, he's put up 37 goals and 117 points. So in two of those games, that's 20 more points. He's had a fantastic season over in the WHL, and I think height looks like a fantastic player for the Minnesota Wild. So to see him sign as DLC is fantastic. And like I said, I think long term he's a fantastic top nine fit for the Minnesota Wild. So very good sign there for Minnesota. Then we saw the Boston Bruins sent 2026th round pick of theirs, center Riley Duran, to a two-year ELC with the AV of Andrew $68,000. They'll begin to the start of next year. Now for the Bruins, that's a pretty good sign in my opinion. Uh, he's been playing over the NCAA over the past couple of years. Uh, last year played in 29 NCAA games, putting up eight goals and 20 points. This year playing 35 NCAA games games, put up 9 goals and 16 points, so played a couple more games, had a couple of less points, also had one more goal, so he looked like a pretty good player, he's so far had played one NHL game since the signing of this contract, been a minus one in the AHL level, so that's a pretty good sign there for the Bruins, I mean, Duran doesn't seem like he should be eventually a solid NHL player, but he could be a decent everyday NHL player, we'll have to wait and see on that, but it could seem to be a solid fourth line center at some point for the Bruins, so pretty good sign there for the Bruins. Then we saw the Calgary Flames, then one of the prospects they got in the uh, Canucks deal that sent the Vancouver Canucks last Lindholm home and Yanni Yermo. Now it's a 2020 third round pick from the Vancouver Canucks. He gets a two year ELC with the AV of $150,000. Now I think Yermo still needs some more development time. So far last year, he played over in Liga, put up a goal and four points in 18 uh, Liga games. This year he's playing 28 games, so 10 more games, but only has the assist to show for it. So he hasn't been overly great this year in Liga, but I think he could eventually maybe have like some sort of a six sevens potential at the NHL level. So it's a pretty good sign there for the Flames to someone who they acquired in the last Lindholm deal and hopefully he can work well in the AHL next year so that's a pretty good sign there for Calgary. Then we saw Fuller Panthers sent undrafted left winger Ben Steves to a two-year ELC with the AV of $950,000. They'll begin the start of next year. Now Steves has been playing over in the NCAA over the past couple of years. Last year put up 21 goals and 28 points in 35 games. This year has 24 goals and 34 points in 37 games. So it's actually had a fantastic season this year at nearly a point per game. Uh, he looked fantastic. Uh, eventually he could maybe be like a solid third line winger. He's even gone to one AHL game since the signing of that contract. No points in one AHL game. So, he looks like a decent player and I think eventually Steve's could be a solid pickup there for the Florida Panthers. So, that's a pretty good sign there for Florida. Then we saw the Dallas Stars sign undrafted goalie prospect and Benjamin Cross to a one-year ELC with the AV of $50,000 that we're going to start of next year. Now, they have a pretty good uh, goaltending time right now of uh, Andre and Wedgwood. Wedgwood is the UFA. So, they may need to reshuffle their goaltending situation a little bit, but I think Cross could eventually be a solid like third stringer for the Stars. Last year had a 2.19 GAA and 9.86 save percentage in six games over in the NCAA. This year is playing 37 games, has a 2.49 GAA and 9.19 save percentage. Even though his numbers are a little worse, he's played a ton more games and he's actually been quite good this year. So I think Cross may have a future as a solid third string, maybe even backup goaltender for the Stars. So that's a pretty good pickup there for the Stars. Then we saw the Detroit Red Wings sent 2023 seventh round pick Emmett Finney, who is a forward, to a three year ELC with AV of $45,000. 
that we're going to start next year. Now, Finney has been playing over in the WHL last year in his draft year at 9 goals and 35 points in 64 WHL games. This year, he has 19 goals and 59 points in 52 WHL games. So that's a fantastic pickup there for the Detroit Red Wings to sign one of their players from this past year's draft to a new ELC. Uh, then we saw the Minnesota Wild sign one of their top end prospects. Uh, left shot defenseman Jack Parrott, who was a second round pick back in 2021, to a three year ELC with the AV of 925, and that will begin at the start of next year. Now, Parrott's actually been playing over in the NCAA. Last year, I had a fantastic season, putting up three goals and 24 points in 39 games. This year, three goals and 14 points in 38 games. So, definitely a little bit down year when it comes point wise, but I think he could definitely be still a solid like, third, second pair of defense in there for the Minnesota Wild. So, again, on his ELC, is fantastic for the Wild, and I think he should be able to be really good there. Then we saw the one loan actual extension contract was the Colorado Avalanche signing Justice and Union, who's their back of goaltender right now, to a two-year contract extension with the AV of Angel $38,000 that we're going to serve next year. Now, Union has mostly been their third string over the past couple of years. They've gone to a couple of NHL games over the past two seasons, uh, putting up decent numbers. But this year's actually been quite good. At 23 NHL games, has a 2.65 GAA and a 9.08 save percentage, but uh, 9 NHL games, he has a 9.26 save percentage and a 2.34 GAA. And he's actually been the goaltender who's been able to give Georgiev a little bit more rest on a consistent basis. So that's a pretty good sign there for the Avalanche. I mean, under $900,000 for a goaltender who looks like he could be a fantastic backup. It's fantastic in my opinion for Colorado and I think they really found themselves a really good back goal tonight in Union. So a pretty good sign there for Colorado. And then we saw the Seattle Kraken sign undrafted left winger Leighton Road to its two-year ELC with AV of $950,000 that began to start of next year. Now like most of these guys, Road has also been playing over in the NCAA last year. 13 goals and 31 points in 36 NCAA games. This year at 14 goals and 30 points in 38 NCAA games. So this year has been a little bit of a down year for Road. But I think eventually it could still be a sell bomb 6-4 for the Seattle Kraken, so that's a pretty good sign there for the Kraken to get him on his ELC too. So those are all the signs from the past couple of days. We saw Height in Minnesota sign his ELC. We saw Duran in Boston sign an ELC. We saw Yermo in Calgary sign his ELC. We saw Steves in Florida sign his ELC. We saw Cross in Dallas sign his ELC. We saw Finney in Detroit sign his ELC. We saw Parrott in Minnesota sign his ELC. We saw Road in Seattle sign his ELC. And we saw Union sign a two-year extension with the Colorado Avalanche. And those are players who have signed contracts over the past couple of days. Days. Still no waiver updates from the past couple days. The last one was still John Gruden. So still still waiver and signing updates over. We'll go over to the injury update part of the video. So uh, as of right now, uh, Alex Nylander has a upper body injury. He's going to be up for a day-to-day -day period of time for the Jackets. Rekker Evans has a lower body injury. He's going to be up for an unknown period of time for the Kraken. Uh, Alex Carey has a upper body injury. He's going to be up for an unknown period of time for the Predators. Boys like Curtis Lazar, Trevor Zeris, and Jeremy Lazan all be clear to play and get back into game action. So very good stuff there. Then we saw Will Carey have upper body injury. He's up day-to-day -day for the Vegas Golden Knights. Brock McGinn has a back injury that's going to keep him up for the next four months. And Oscar Stuckwitz has a knee injury that's going to keep him up for the next six months. And with the timeline right now, with only being under a month away from the end of the regular season, there's very likely a chance that McGinn and Stuckwitz don't make it back for the rest of the season. So, bad blows there. See McGinn and Stuckwitz go down for the rest of the year. Uh, Max Jones has an upper body injury. He's going to be up for an period of time. Barabanov in San Jose has a foot injury. He's going to be up for an unknown period of time. Valen Chushkin in Colorado has a lower body injury. Is out day to day. Lucas Rusek has a face injury. He's going to be out day to day for the Buffalo Sabres. Thomas Shabbat has a lower body injury. He's out for an unknown period of time for the centers. But then we also saw Jack Quinn be clear to play. Tyson Joseph be clear to play in Buffalo. Hedman Point be clear to play in Tampa. And Eric Sinek and Brodine be clear to play in Minnesota. And should be able to get back if they haven't already uh, into game action not just in the future. So those are interesting injury updates there. Bad news to see guys like Sunkvist and McGinn go down for the rest of the year. Also bad news to see guys like Nachush can go down, Verbanov go down, and Carrier go down with injuries, but interesting to see guys like Zegers go back into the lineup, uh, Quinn get back in the lineup, Point get back in the lineup, and Brodin get back in the lineup. And hopefully those guys are able to do really good getting back into the lineup for their respective teams. So really good stuff there. And lastly, we're going over to a couple of quick off-season trade rumors uh, from the past couple of days. Now, I've seen a couple of people talk about this. The Flames may be big buyers in the off-season this year. Now, they have a, apparently a ton of cap space to work with after after all the moves they made uh, before a trade deadline, they have around $19 million to work with in Cavs, if I'm correct. Plus, you could also include more if they wind up moving marks from the offseason. So, they're going to have a lot of Cavs space to play with, and they could definitely use a little bit of help on that team. I mean, if you look at their team, Cavs does not have the greatest of blue lines. I mean, as of right now, they have Uyghur and Anderson as their top two defensemen. Besides that, they have Shillington, Okotya, Hanley, Packle, Gilbert. I mean, none of those are bad defensemen, but they're not really elite-level defensemen, and they're definitely not top four defenseman at this point in time. 
If you look at their forward group, only Blake Coleman, Michael Backlund, Kadri Huberto, and Possible Steele are signed beyond this year. So there's a very likely chance that there's going to be a lot of turnover coming in the Flames forward group. I mean, mind you, Pine's going to be UFA soon. Uh, Kuzmenko's going to be UFA soon. So Sharon Govich, uh, Kevin Rooney will be UFA soon. Coronado Nazario will need new contracts after next year. So they're going to need a lot of turnover over on that team. So there's a very likely chance that they continue on with this retool of theirs. They may move off a couple of pieces. I would not be surprised if we saw guys like Manji Apani or Kuzmenko be moved. If not in the offseason, then by next year's trade deadline. I think it's a very likely possibility. On top of that, uh, I could definitely see them go after a lot of really great players. I mean, I could see them go after some of the top end guys. They have the cap space to do so, so I could see them overpay to try and get some players on their teams. Look at some of the top end players who could be available at this year's free agency market. I could see them go after Gensel. If he makes it there, I could see him go after Marshall. I could see him go after Matt Duchesne. I could see him try and bring back Tyler Toffoli. I could see him go after a guy like Terry Vuteravainen. I could see him go after a guy like Vladimir Tarasenko, Adam Henrique, uh, Max Domi. Uh, Patrick Kane, uh, Daniel Sprong, Mantha. I think a defenseman, I don't think Hanfman is going back, but I could see him go after a guy like Brady Shea, uh, Brett Pesci, Shane Goss to spare. Uh, I do wonder about Brandon Montour if uh, he makes it to the free agent market. Uh, I do wonder about Oliver Ekman Larson. There's definitely a couple of guys that could go after free agency wise. There's also a couple of guys that could go after via trade wise. I mean, I wonder about Logan Couture. Could they try and acquire him to be their new number one center? I wonder about Colin Pareko. Could he be a fantastic top four addition for? For that team uh, given their really a lot of holes on the blue line right now so I think they could definitely look to improve their team either via free agency or via the trade market to try and get some players on more longer term deals like Kachar's a couple more years left on his deal Preco I think five or six years left I could see them try and sign a couple more free agents it's maybe a little bit of an overpayment but for a couple more seasons so I could definitely see that happening for Calgary and if Calgary only have two really good defensemen and uh, Uyghur and Anderson signed for the next couple of seasons and even potentially moving Anderson and with uh, the four group having guys like Manji Pani, Sharon Govich, and Kuzmenko all being UFAs not this offseason, but next offseason, I think there's a very likely chance they continue on with this retool and they continue to bring in some more players who are in more longer term deals who can definitely help this team longer term. So interesting stuff there, uh, but it does sound like Calgary with their amount of cap space they have right now and the potentiality of them getting more cap space by moving Markstrom. They could have north of $20 million in cap space this year and if they make some more moves, they could potentially even have north of 30. So it's going be interesting to see exactly what Calgary does, but there's a very likely chance, in my opinion, that Calgary is buyers in this year's uh, offseason and they try and add some pieces. I could definitely love to hear your thoughts on who you think they could also trade for. I mean, I think a Champ Pareko are two interesting names. I could see some other guys being named just too. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Next, going over to the Arizona Coyotes, could we see them do some sort of a similar thing that they did last year where they move a second or uh, high-end draft pick in order to get an already established NHL player from a team who has a little bit of cap trouble? Now, I'm looking at a couple of younger guys. I don't think they want to go after a whole bunch of guys who are on longer-term deals, but I do think they could go after a couple of guys who are cost control for the next couple of years and are being able to be retained as an RFA. So if we look at that, looking at some pending RFA, so I could see the Arizona Coyotes target this offseason. Uh, one would be Nils Lundqvist in Dallas. I mean, he's been a really good third pair defenseman for them, uh, but he may want a little too much more money than the Stars are willing to pay. And I think they would want probably one more top four defenseman to sign with them longer term. So I do wonder if the Coyotes could target Lundqvist as like a solid top four defensemen. I could also see the Coyotes also target a couple of forwards, including a guy like Capo Caco. I know there's an unlikely chance that he does get moved, uh, but I think there's a very likely chance that Caco could be a really good middle six four for the Arizona Coyotes, and they would have the assets to pull off a deal to get him from New York. So I could definitely see the Coyotes sort of makes that type of a move, and I could see him be a really good top six forward there for the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, Jack Drury is having a fantastic season over in Carolina. Could be a solid third line center there for the Arizona Coyotes. So I do wonder if maybe he's priced himself out of Carolina if the Canes will be willing to ship him off to Arizona. Uh, on top of that, I do wonder about uh, Philip Tomasino. He's been up and down so far this year for the National Predators. He hasn't been a consistent NHL player for the Preds. That's 20 points in 47 NHL games, but I could see him be a solid top 9 forward long term. So, and if he's priced out of Nashville, or if the Preds really don't see a future with him, I could see Arizona trying to acquire that him. If there's only a couple more guys who are a year out who could see him trying to acquire, one would be Adam Boakvist in Columbus. There's been a lot of talk about 
with him potentially being moved. I could still see the Jackets move him. So I could see Coyotes flip like a second round pick to uh, Columbus in order to acquire Boquist. Uh, Nick Haig, I talked about this in one of my last videos. I could see him be moved in the offseason to create the cap space to sign Jonathan Marshall. I would not be overly surprised if that happens. So uh, in my opinion, I think there's a very likely chance that Nick Haig could be a target for the Arizona Coyotes if they feel they can sign him next offseason. So there's going to be a couple of options here. I could also see him go after a guy who's already established, who's got a little bit more of a longer term contract, but is also young, like a Mario Ferraro. So it's going to be interesting to see what I see the Arizona Coyotes, who we will know in a little bit of time if they're even going to be called the Arizona Coyotes next year. But I do think the Arizona Coyotes need to continue on with this rebuild of theirs, continue to move picks that they already have to acquire good young talent that's already established at the NHL level. I liked what they did with Jersey last year. He's been a fantastic fit in Arizona. He's a top four defenseman, something that I think they really needed. So they need to do a little bit more of this. If they could go after another guy who could be a really good fit in that team, who is sort of pricing himself out of a situation like a Kako or a Drury, I could see him do that sort of the same thing. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens there for uh, Arizona, but I think they will go the same route they did last year, and they will try and improve this team by acquiring uh, young talent with some of their draft capital they have right now. I mean, they have tons of second round picks and third round picks over the next couple of years. I don't think moving one or two will be overly detrimental to their uh, rebuild plan. So it will be interesting to see there. And last year, going over to uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Now, the Sabres have had an iffy goaltending run this year. I mean, at the beginning of the season, when they were suffering, the goaltending was subpar, to say the least. I mean, they were trying to have Comrie, Lukanen, and Levi rotate a three-tied goalie system. It never really worked. Lukanen wasn't finding his game. Comrie was up and down, to say the least. And Levi was not ready for a starting role at the NHL level. So due to that fact, uh, they moved Levi down for a little bit. Uh, they had Lukanen and Comrie be their uh, tandem at the NHL level. And that worked out quite well. I mean, Lukanen got majority of the starts and he's been fantastic this year. I know he's had a couple of sour games the past week, week and a half, but I think Lukan has actually done quite well. Uh, Comrie's still been up and down and they've recently called up Devin Levi, who's looked pretty good at the NHL level. So uh, they look like they have a really good future in goal, but I would caution them on bring up Levi next year. I think if they were to be smart about this, they should probably leave Levi in the AHL for one more season, let him continue to develop, and then the year after that, have him at least be a backup at the NHL level or a solid NHL starter. So with that in mind, I think the right plan for this Buffalo Sabres team right now would be to add, uh, most likely via free agency, a 1B goaltender who's more of a veteran goaltender who can play 30 to 35 games and take some starts off of Uko Pekalukunen and have Uko Pekalukunen be the 1A for next year while Levi remains in the minors and then have uh, Levi and Luke can be their tandem. So I think that's sort of the way they should be going about this. Now, there are a lot of decent goaltenders who I think could easily be 1B goaltenders at the NHL level next year. Uh, you got Elias Samson, who's having a up and down season, had a horrible start to the season, is having a decent uh, second half for the Maple Leafs, and I could see Samson not be a solid pickup there for the Buffalo Sabres. I look at Anthony Stolarz or Laurent Brossois, I know they haven't played over a of games, Stolarz playing only 22 games, Brossois only playing 20, uh, but those guys have fantastic numbers, and if they got a veteran goaltender who could be like a 1B goaltender to Ukupeka Lukanen, I would be looking at Stolarz and Brossois as being veteran ads, I could see those two be fantastic pickups there for Buffalo. Uh, if you look at uh, Alex Nadalkovich, you also have not too bad of a season. I could see them trying to target him. You can also look at Casey the Smith, who's having a fantastic season over Vancouver. He could be a fantastic fit there. So those are some of the goalies I could see the Sabres trying to target. I mean, Samsonov may be a little bit too out of their price range, but I mean, if they were looking for a solid backup goaltender, Stolarz, Brossois, Nadalkovich, the Smith, they're all only going to cost between like one and two million dollars. So assign those guys to like a two million dollar one year deal to allow Levi to sort of be the goaltender at the AHL level for next year and run with those two, try and get back into the playoff mix and then have Levi Luke in tandem the year after I think will be a fantastic pickup there for Buffalo so in my opinion the way they go through with their goal thing is they leave Levi in the AHL for next year have him have a full season not a one that's up and down up and down have him have a full season at the AHL level uh, let him develop let him continue to thrive let him dominate the AHL level while you have Pekka Luke in, who's shown that he can be a star this year be the 1A at the NHL level and have a solid 1B goaltender who can play some NHL games and take some NHL starts off of Luka Pekka Luke in, sort of make his life easier at the NHL level. So I think if they could do that, sign a guy like the Smith or Stolarz or Brossois, 
or Nedeljkovic to a one-year deal, have them be the backup. I think that would be a fantastic move for Buffalo. And I'm not exactly sure if they will do this. There's been some talk about them go after a starter. I don't think they need to go after a really high-end level starter. I think they really need to go after a 1B goaltender here who can work with Luka Pekka in and a tandem next year. So definitely, I have your guys' thoughts on this down in the comment section below. What do you think about this? Uh, do you think that the Sabres' right move should be going after a 1B goaltender to try and work in a tandem with Luka Pekka Or do you think they should try and start Levi at the NHL level again next year? Uh, do you think that the Arizona Coyotes will go the same route they did last year with Jersey, where they move a draft pick in order to acquire a really good young talent? Could they go after a guy like Kako, Drury, Tomasino, Lungfist, Hag, Bokfist? Or do you think there's another guy who could definitely be uh, the guy who they could target? I definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, what do you think about the Calgary? Could they add a lot of pieces of this year's uh, offseason? Could they go over the trade route, go with guys like Achur, Pareko, maybe a couple of different guys? Could they go after some of the top free agents in the free agent uh, market this year? Definitely want to hear your thoughts on that and what do you think about the injury updates and the signing updates from the past couple days definitely love your guys thoughts on all that down in the comment section below so much power for today we're going to like this video and if you like to subscribe down below thank you for your support and really good over you guys so if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below so i'll just listen to today's video i also do a blog talking about news rumors analysis stuff like that so if you check that out link down in the description below and catch you guys all for next video see you guys soon